Article 21 is very clear about the law. So we are, we're getting to the point where we're having some good discussions about this now. But you can't, if it's a general budget, if it's not something that you are personally or a member of your family are going to benefit from, why would you have to file a disclosure form? So we're having a little, we're, we're a little frustrated at the moment that we have to leave the body, go into the Senate reading room, and everyone has to sign a form before they can vote. Part of the bill that deals with um, legislators taking bribes, it sort of stipulates that it's, it's basically it's legal, you get in trouble for it only if it was accepted to influence legislation. Why only go so far? Why not just say you can't accept a gift from family, from friends, from anyone? Why can't you accept a gift from your family? I'm sorry, if your mother gives you a gift, you've got to give it back because you're a legislator? Is that right? So we are different from everybody else because we're legislators. We cannot take gifts from our siblings, from our parents, from our children. Does that make any sense? We actually went further than the House and the Governor on the penalties and on the gifts. How do people get to leadership? How did you get to the leadership position? Did you have to make these kinds of deals? Is there some sense that you don't have to Longevity to is too, uh, people, there should be term limits. I mean, what can we do? If, if it goes to the very top. Well, the, in the leadership positions, there are term limits. There's, um, the House just put their, DeLeo just put them back in the House. They had lifted them for Fenner. Uh, there's eight years. And uh, uh, if you're still alive after eight years, being in leadership position, you're lucky. <laughs> this is my second year now, and it's, and it feels like I've been here forever. forever. Uh, in fact, I think it was Jerome on my staff said, could we just step down and have somebody else step up for a while until this comes <laughs> over? Um, it's, you know, you get the top, sh top job, but it's like being captain of the Titanic. You know, it's sinking. Some people consider Beacon Hill to be sort of a bubble. So it, it is a bubble. It's not the real world. There's a, there's a joke that if, if everything was on the level, they wouldn't have built it on a hill. <laughs> uh, so it's definitely not the real world. You have to leave that building, and it's not. It's not even. It, it, it's not the culture around it. It's the building. There, the rumors. Isn't uh, you okay? They're fun. It's the rumors. Uh, it's the uh, that, that are that are that start fire and absolutely have no basis of truth to them, that start in the morning and, and are done in the evening, or start in the evening and by the next morning you say, what? That never happened. Or there's, there's maybe that little truth to it and the people go across the street into the pubs and the bars and they get bigger, the rumor gets bigger and bigger and you just you just can't hang out out there. How do you protect yourself from sort of falling prey to that? I mean, everyone, I think, gets sucked in a little bit. You know, how in your own personal experience, especially being one of the top three leadership folks on Beacon Hill, you know, how do you deal with sort of not becoming a part of that culture or realizing perhaps when you are? I have five sisters. And I have nieces and nephews. And I have really good friends. And they're not afraid to tell me if they think that I'm doing something that isn't right. But so how did you, I mean, that's not an easy choice. How did you, you, you know, you obviously must have weighed the pros and cons. How did you come up with the sales tax and, uh, and nothing on the others? Well, uh, income tax was the, was the most difficult. The more liberal members will go for the income tax, and they, they put it up to 5-7. I, uh, when people are struggling the way they are right now, and it takes two people in a family to really cap the family, keep going, two jobs, and you've lost one and you're teetering on the other. How do you reach into the person's paycheck and then say, by the way, I'm going to take this big chunk out of there every week? Um, on the gas tax, that was, that thing caught fire. I mean, from the west, from the south, <laughs> from the north, Everybody said, "Oh, you can't, you can't touch the gas tax. We just got it down." And of course, now it's up to what, 281 or something. It's already up again, and again on the briefing with the Federal Reserve, oil's going up. That's going to continue to go up, and the, and this, which means for for states like ours, dependent on oil, both for our manufacturing, from our businesses, from our houses, the costs are going to go up. Cost of living is going to go up for us. Is it enough money for transportation? Do you guys feel like this is, you know, someone called like scare tactics? Some people have said that. Is is it enough? 
we're, we're go not going to have enough for everything for the next 10 years, if you look at it like that. There will have to be, and this was the pushback from the, what, from the rest of the state outside the metropolitan Boston area. They're saying, we we'll pay for the big dick. Our roads and bridges haven't been done. We have uh, regional transportation authorities where our people who ride those RTAs pay more than the people who ride the MBTA. And we're not going to raise any tax, including a sales tax, until unless we get, unless some of that comes to us. So even with the 275 we'll put aside for the transportation agencies, they wanted to make sure that their RTAs, that their systems were going to get some of that. That's, it's a question of fairness. Uh, and, they're, and they're not wrong, which is what, how we came to the sales tax. The reorganization of the transportation agencies will bring savings. It will take us a couple of years to get there. We think that the 275 we're putting in, and uh, for that, for that, will be enough to cover them. As yes, the T is going to have to increase their. They're they're pretty low for a metropolitan system if you compare them to the rest of the country. Now, for for the riders, they'll say yeah, but the, the service stinks. You know, the service should be better, and the service should be better. It should be more reliable. Are you? Running for anything, including governor? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Do you have any interest in being governor? No. Ever? No. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have people that ask me to do that. Yeah. But I assure them that that's definitely not in my future. Why not? I like being the Senate president. And uh, the way our Constitution is set up, it when we have the first Constitution. The legislature uh, was written into the Constitution first. We are number one the executive after that. <laughs> we are the first, first article in the Constitution. Been, and because if you remember, the framers of the Constitution didn't like the governor because the governor was appointed by the king. So they wrote in and made it that, so that the governor is the administrative branch and we are the legislative branch. I, I like the legislature.